This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so we want to um, work on the three weeks, the fast days that are coming up, all, all that's involved with that, the restrictions, the understandings of what it's all about. And we will do that shortly. I did want to tie up some loose ends from last week. Last week, we spoke about lash. Lash is kneading. Hi, Danielle. But lash was, is kneading, taking two different um, materials and having them mixed together. And that way they form one homogeneous unit. Okay. And there are, the, the, there are two stages where it is problematic. One is simply in combining the two. The other is in the actual mixing. Okay. Now, when it comes to a powdered drink, chocolate milk, iced tea, using a powder, instant coffee, anything like that, that is not lush. Right. That is not something coming together to become this 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 single co cohesive unit we'll call it okay so there are three different categories there is what's called a belief and, and and this is an excellent safer you might want to look into this it's a four volume set you got it okay it's a it's it's quite an encyclopedia but it is it's very thorough. Yes, yes, yes. It yes, um, it is very thorough and it's very clear. Yeah. Rabbi Tina? Yes, it's oh. called the the oh, thirty nine malachos okay. by Rabbi David Ribiat. David Ribiat. Thank you. Okay. So there is a Belila Ava, when it is a thick mixture, and that's problem even just adding in the liquid, that's gonna be a problem. That'd be like a thick oatmeal or kneading flour and water to turn it into dough, right? It's by kneading it together, it becomes a different sort of substance, right? You put the hot water into the instant oatmeal, if you're doing it thick, it becomes a different sort of substance. You had water, you had flakes, and now you've got glob. I don't know exactly the, the scientific term for it. We'll go with glob, right? It's a different sort of, 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 of construct that you have afterwards. That one cannot do one shots. There is belila raka, right? When it's a, a, a very loose mixture, okay? A loose mixture would be a very loose oatmeal, okay? And there we need to do what's called a shinoi. You need to do it in an unusual manner, okay? Both in the adding and also in the mixing. Because we said there are two stages, there are two aspects to it. So each of those stages need to have what's called a shino to do it in a slightly different normal manner than normal. So if your cereal is going to get really congealed, right? Let's say rice krispies, you put in some milk, right? So there, normally, how do we do cereal? We first put in the cereal, then we add the milk. So reverse the order. Have the milk and then add in the cereal. And if you're going to mix, mix it in an unusual manner. Right, by the right, so you're not mixing it. Okay, so we make those shinuyim. But if it is a davar nozel, if it is a liquid, right, then that is not going to be an issue. Okay, if it's a liquid because it has no, it has no body at all. Therefore, it's not even. It has no resemblance. He writes to the malacha of lash of that kneading instant coffee instant tea right drink powders mixed with water okay clear good okay one, one question rabbi uh, just one second yes 
last is we're in resin kneading, and that's um, that that's when we're we're making uh, a, a, I guess ma making a substance kind of come together. Two substances come together. Correct. Okay. Let's see how. And so that we cannot do, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. But if, if it's a then we do it with a machinery. Correct. Correct. Yeah, lash is defined as the combining of tiny particles into a solid or semi-solid mass by means of a liquid medium. Okay, and that's why powdered drink is certainly not lush, right? It's not becoming a solid or a semi solid. Okay, good. Okay, are we good? Yes, so I have a question over here. I have a question, Robin. Yes, Leticia. Um, I wasn't sure about squeezing a toothpaste tube to place it on the toothbrush. Is that Okay, so squeeze. there, the, the, the issue is not necessarily squeezing out of the tube, but the problem there is with the toothpaste, that's, that is then being smeared onto the teeth and then is turning into a liquid. That's, yeah. that's where we have more of an issue. And that's when it comes to brushing teeth on Shabbos. So we said that they do sell some liquid toothpastes if one wants to buy that, or... What, what we person what Natalie and I do, we just use mouthwash. And, and, and you'll find that, that, that if you just rinse your mouth with mouthwash and then spit it out and then put your toothbrush in there and go to work, within a moment, you've got yourself. You know, oh, it's right. You guys took my, uh, my advice. We tried it. Okay. This, this is one of those. Yeah. You know, do try this at home. Right. And uh, yeah. And, and it works. And it, so th that's what I would advise. Okay, thanks, Rob. Um, mouthwash, do we have to spit it out? Like, can we keep it in and brush at the same yeah. time? Okay. Yeah. So, so with with kids, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry so much. Yeah. Yeah, you got your older two who would be more concerned with. Your younger three, we could. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Let's wait till they get teeth. Okay, <laughs> and then we'll and then we'll move on from there. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, just just look. It'll be good for London to just recognize that Shabbos is very different. Right, you know, she's not going to understand the intricacies of the, you know, but just to know that Shabbos is a very different day than any other day. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to hit the pause button figuratively on on Shabbos and move now on to our our calendar, okay, and that which is coming up and gaining an understanding in that. We have one Torah level fast day. And then we've got how many rabbinic fast days? Keep going. Is it Keep six? Going. Five. Oh, five. Okay. And then we have five rabbinic fast days. We don't fast on Shabbos, with the exception being the Torah level fast day, which of course the Torah level fast day is Yom Kippur. If Yom Kippur falls out on a Shabbos, Yom Kippur falls out on a Shabbos, and we fast on Yom Kippur. Any of the other fast days, will get pushed, either will never fall out on a Shabbat, or if they do, as is the case with both the 17th of Tammuz and Tish B'Av, 
both of those dates fall out on Shabbat. And instead, we're going to fast not on the 17th of Tammuz, but on Sunday, the 18th. Not on the 9th of Av, which is Shabbat, but on Sunday, which is the 10th of Av. Okay. Let's look at these rabbinic fast days. Four out of the five are linked to Jerusalem. Four out of the five are linked to Jerusalem. The fifth, we'll just touch upon for a second because we dealt with it before, which is the one that's not linked to Jerusalem, which fast day? No, he is. That was a good that was a good guess. Right? But think Torah, my friend. Tani Esther. Tanit Esther is not going to be linked, is not linked to Jerusalem. Yeah. Tanit Esther, the fast of Esther, right? That is actually not linked to Esther's fast before she went into Achash Rosh. That took place Pesach time before Purim, right? Many, many months before. But that fast day is linked that on the, what we call Tanit Esther, that's the day that we went to battle against our enemies. And, and when we would go into battle, counterintuitively what would we do we would fast when we go into battle because we would recognize that our strength and our victory is not dependent upon our physical strength and stamina and energy but it is dependent upon the heavens so they fasted on the 13th day of other when they went to battle against the, our enemies so we too fast on that day. That one is not linked to Jerusalem. The other four are, okay? And what we have coming up is the middle two of those four. So let's just touch upon one, and then we'll get to the two and three, and then we'll touch upon four. Number one is back in the month of Tevet, okay? The 10th of Tevet. That is going back towards the winter. That is the shortest of the fasts because besides Yom Kippur and Tisha B'Av, the fast only begins in the morning, early morning, with the morning light. It's called Alot HaShachar, about 72 minutes before actual sunrise. And it lasts until until night time which is defined as three stars coming out the same time that shabbat ends okay so when it's in the winter when it's in december which is the right tevet is the month right after well the first few days of tevet is still the last days of hanukkah so we're in december time we're in the winter it's a short fast what happened then as relates to jerusalem is the siege on Jerusalem began. The siege on Jerusalem, which led to its destruction, that began on the 10th of Tevet. Three years later, or two and a half, two plus years later, on the 17th day of Tammuz, which is what's coming up, on this Saturday, this Shabbat. Again, the fast is pushed off to Sunday. That is when the walls around Jerusalem were breached. I'm sorry. It, it, so it gets pushed off. It's, it, it, it's the 17th of Tammuz, 17th of the Hebrew month of Tammuz. And it's important for you guys to learn the Hebrew months, to be able to know the Hebrew months in order. Our whole calendar revolves around these Hebrew months. So it's important to know to know the months. So the 17th day of Tammuz, which again, this, this year falls out on Shabbat. So the fast day is pushed off to the 18th. But what happened then was a number of events. 
The Mishnah in Tanit explains there were five things that happened on the 17th of Tammuz. One is that the walls were breached and the enemy started to enter into Jerusalem itself. Also going much further back in time, Moshe came down from Mount Sinai with the Aseret HaDibrot, the Ten Commandments, the tablets, the Luchot HaEven, the stone Luchot, the stone tablets in his hands. And what did he encounter when he came down? The Eagles the Hub. The Chet HaEgel, the sin of the golden calf. And he broke, and he broke those tablets. It was the right thing to do. The Gemara learns out, Asher Shibarta, Yasher Kochacha Sheshibarta. You did the right thing in breaking them. We were not worthy of receiving them at that point. But nevertheless, it's a tragedy that we got to the point that Moshe brought down the Luchot and the proper, the proper thing was for him to break those Luchot. Okay? So the Luchot, is that next one? I had one. I can't prepare it. But running dry here. Thank you. We need a bear, Miriam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just not going to hit the cup. Okay, I'll be careful. Okay. <laughs> so, number two was the Luchot were broken. Number three is that the carbon tamid, the daily sacrifice, was suspended. We were no longer able to bring the daily sacrifice. Also, Apostomus, one of the Roman generals, burned a Sefer Torah. And either, it's, it's different opinions in the Mishnah, either he or talking about the wicked King Menashe, it was on this day that he put an idol into the Beit HaMikdash, into the into the. So this was a tragic day on many, many accounts. And as we know, the Jewish calendar doesn't start at a point and go straight out, but rather we keep re-entering this zone. It goes in this in, in a cyclical manner, and we re-enter this zone. And that's why it's brought that if a person, if a Jew is, has a court case with a non-Jew, better not during these three weeks. This hasn't been a very opportune, uh, positive time for us. So we are re-entering this zone, so to speak. And it begins with a fast day, okay? This is, as opposed to Tish Abba'av, this is a, considered to be one of the minor fast days. As a minor fast day, it doesn't begin with sunset the night before, rather it only begins with the morning light, with the, with, with, Dawn, we'll call it, about 72 minutes before actual sunrise. We don't eat or drink for the entire day, right? If a person is pregnant or nursing, then there are allowances that are made for that, okay? There is not a prohibition against wearing leather shoes, as there is on Tish Abav and on Yom Kippur. There is not a prohibition against washing as there is on Tish Abba'av and on Yom Kippur, but we don't eat or drink for that entire day. Okay? Now, the idea of fasting is to help us focus on the more of the spirituality. Right, it's not uh, the, the, the 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 text proof that is always brought is by the city of Ninveh, of Yonah, Jonah, and the 
and the large fish fame story, right, from, which is from the Nevi'im, that when they repented, it doesn't say that God saw their fasting or God saw their sackcloth. It says God saw that they had changed their ways. So it's important, right, the, the, the fixation should not be just on the fasting, but ideally we want to try to use this as a, as a day for introspection and to try to um, right the ship, try to, to improve, improve ourselves. Okay. Being a minor fast, the question that often comes up, how about brushing one's teeth? Okay, right? So, like I said, we can wash, but in terms of wash, you know, brushing teeth, that's more of a question because you're actually putting liquid into your mouth, right? On Yom Kippur, no. On Tisha B'Av, no. On these other more minor fast days, yes. You can brush your teeth. You just want to be careful to spit out and rinse your mouth afterwards. But you want to be careful not to swallow any of the water. The fact that after you spit out the water, when you start to swallow, you're tasting the tooth, the toothpaste. That's just because it's still in your mouth. It got mixed with your saliva, and that's what you're tasting, right? And that's not a problem. One is allowed to swallow saliva on a fast day. Okay, that's not going to be an issue, right? Otherwise, <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, uh, and mad comic books, that whole thing that that um, so, uh, swallowing saliva can cause cancer, but only when swallowed in small amounts over an extended period of time, right? right? No, you don't have to fast. Yom Kippur is different. Even on Tisha B'Av, I have clearly from Rav David Cohen that if you're having difficulty, then you should eat. Okay? It doesn't mean you're ordering a pepperoni pizza, right? But, um, right, you have what you need, right? If, you, if you're feeling hungry and thirsty and you're, and you're fully nursing, then you should eat, okay? Yeah. You, 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 don't, you don't want to wait until you're, you know, until you're, until you're fainting, yeah, yeah. So um, th this fast ends, um, I, I don't have the calendar in front of me, but it's on our calendar. I would imagine about when Shabbos ends, about 840 something. Okay, so it depends what time you're waking up in the morning, right? <laughs> you know, if you're on a, on a Sunday morning, right? We're diving at 8:30. So you're waking up at eight o'clock. So it's about it's about 12 hours. Okay, yeah. These the, these are the longer fasts. Yes. Yeah, she just looked at the calendar, and it ends at 8:44. Or say it again. I'm sorry. Are we on? <clears throat> I'm sorry. Um, Yoshi just looked at the calendar, and it says that um, the fast ends at 8:44. It's about 8:45. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so on this fasting, is it like in Shabbat where we have to turn keep the lights on mm. and the okay. screen and all that? Okay. So, so to be clear, thank you for that, uh, Zara. So this is it's not a, it's not a Shabbat. Yom Kippur is like a Shabbat. These days are not like a Shabbat. We drive, we we turn on lights, we cook, right? It's it's a it's a regular weekday, except the davening is a little bit different, right? It's more of an extended shacharit davening, and also mincha we read from the Torah. Right? It's but besides that, it it is a weekday in terms of all of those things. Yes. 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 You can go to work on on Tisha B'Av, which is right three weeks from that. So there, ideally, one would not go to work, at least not in the morning. Okay. Yes. Um. 
a movie would not be in the spirit of the day. You know, going for a walk in the park would not be an issue. You can exercise, but if that's going to make you get kind of hungry, probably not a good idea. Yeah. 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 I'm talking about during, I'm talking about on sun, this Sunday on the fast day. Okay. Now, that ushers in what we call the three weeks. And during these three weeks, we have increasing levels of Avelut, of mourning, starting with the 17th, starting with this Sunday, and then continuing when we reach Rosh Chodesh Av, the, the first of, of, of Av, which will be on a on Friday, right? It was July 29th, thank you. All right, you know, let me skip my calendar. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. So, so Friday, July 29th, that is when the nine days starts. So we have the three weeks. We have the nine days. That starts with the beginning of the month of Av. And then we have Tisha B'Av. Then we have after Tisha B'Av itself. Normally, Erev Tisha B'Av has certain added things that happen. This year, since it's Shabbos, we do not. What are the restrictions of the three weeks? So, according to the Minhag Ashkenaz, starting already, uh, we will not get haircuts or trim or anything like that, mm -hmm. right? Shaving. Uh, if one needs to do it for work, then one can, but otherwise, one does not. Okay. Yes. Okay. That applies to men. That also applies to women in terms of hair, right? Um, head hair, but shaving legs, something like that, that a woman can do. Okay. So there is the haircuts. There is the music, right? That we don't listen to music during these three weeks. A cappella. Which is where it's just all vocals. So nowadays, a cappella is done in such a way that you'd think that you've got a full orchestra over there. Yeah. So there are those that say, well, there's no musical instruments and no musical instruments. And there are those that say, uh, well, there's at this point, you can hardly tell the difference between musical instruments and a cappella. So there are those that, and, you know, one one can choose how they want to go with that. Yeah. Correct. Correct. If you need to, meaning if that's part of what Uber drivers are expected to do, right? So then so then, you know, a person who plays music for their profession, right, would be allowed to during the three weeks. Yeah. When you say creating music, I mean you're putting together music to use for your, for your classes. 
and, and the girls enjoyed it very much. They had a good time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So if that's your livelihood, yes. So that so that that you can do. Okay. And we do not schedule weddings at all. You know, there are certain times on the Jewish calendar where weddings are not scheduled. The three weeks is a time that weddings are not scheduled. And also typically um, after Pesach until Lagba Omer, also typically weddings are not scheduled. Okay. So those are the things that we do during these three weeks that, that we don't do, right? There's no problem with, um, right? Um, so also, let's say, you know, going to movies, things like that. So that would, this would be a time not to necessarily be doing that. Certainly concerts, anything like that, you know, but even movies, things like that, it's a time to... Um, to step back a little bit on on all of this um, entertainment stuff, okay? No, watching at home is different. I think than 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 going out, going out to a theater. Yes, yes, <laughs> only some. Yeah, yes, yeah. Okay. Moving along a little bit, just on the on the fast days, okay? Because let's see, how should we do this? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Let's move on the fast days. On the yes. 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 So the three weeks. It's three weeks, but you also have nine days as the last nine days of those three weeks. It's actually 22 days because, right, it'll be Sunday to Sunday in this case, or Wednesday, whatever, however it falls out. So actually it's 22 days, but we call it the, the three weeks, okay? The next of the fast days, in that cycle of four is Tisha B'Av, which is the strictest of the rabbinic fast days. And it is um, very Yom Kippur-like in its observance, okay? Meaning, right, there's no eating or drinking, of course, but we start with sunset of the week, of the night before. Right, so it's it, it ends up being a twenty-five hour fast, basically. Correct, correct. We also don't wear leather shoes, and we don't uh, wash at all. Meaning, even in the morning when we wash our hands, the negel vasa, the field in the morning, we only wash up until the knuckles. Right, you will not be rinsing out your mouth. Right, you know, brushing teeth, anything like that, and also marital relations. A couple do not engage in marital relations, and it's as if the wife is in a state of nida. So actually, the beds are separated. Right, you know, putting aside even even um, marital relations, but the beds are separated as they are during the time of nida when the woman is having her, her cycle before uh, going to the mikvah. Okay? So that is Tisha B'Av. What happened on Tisha B'Av? The breaking of the tablets? The breaking of the um, tablets? I'm sorry, we just said tablets. that. <laughs> that to say. Yes. Both the first temple and yes. the second temple were destroyed on Tisha B'Av. Also, going back in time to the Torah time, what happened on Tisha B'Av? The spies. That's what the I meant spies. to say. I read about this <laughs> ago. The night that we cried our needless tears of crying. 
with this slanderous report about the land of Israel. And we cried that we don't want to go into the land. That was designated as the night that we would cry for being having to, for being sent out. Yeah. So that was the night that we cried, uh, the needless cries, the 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 the, the, the senseless cries of the Maragda. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Liddell said how everything really is connected and comes around full circle, and, and it's very true. And 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 we think we see how things are connected now. Right? Ultimately, we'll see just how connected everything truly is. Yeah, yeah. And on Tisha B'Av also. Um, we sit, we become like mourners on Tisha B'Av. Literally, a person who is in Avel, right, a person who is in mourning, what are the seven relations for which one actually becomes a mourner, a full mourner? Parents, siblings. Okay, so it's seven altogether. It's two upper generation, mother, father. It's two down generations, son or daughter, and it's three parallel generation, which would be brother, sister, spouse. Two, three, two. Okay? And when a person is in mourning, so they don't wear leather shoes, they don't bathe. Actually, during the whole nine days, with the exception of getting ready for Shabbos, there are other restrictions that come on. We certainly minimize our bathing. We don't wear freshly laundered garments during those nine days. Right? We'll discuss a little bit how we prepare for that. And also, besides Shabbos, we don't eat meat, includes chicken, anything that is bisari, right? And we don't drink wine. Shabbos is the exception, and Abdullah becomes the question mark, right? Because Abdullah is Shabbos, not Shabbos, right? So there, we would typically give it to a, a, a younger child to drink, as opposed to we ourselves drinking it, okay? That's during the nine days. Tisha B'Av also, at least until, not at least, until Chatzot, until midday, we don't, uh, the night and, and the next morning until midday, we don't sit on a regular chair, but like a mourner, we sit on low stools. Over here, what we do is, uh, people basically sit on the floor, we turn the chairs over, you sit like that, right, until midday, okay? At night of Tisha B'Av, we read Megillat Echa, one of the five Megillot, this is the book of Lamentations that Yirmiyahu wrote lamenting, Jeremiah wrote lamenting about the destruction. And then, right, I mean, other things that we do, we'll go over again, but on a normal year, we have our last, the, 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 the Seudah Mavseket, it's called, which is the Suda, the meal, which the last meal that we have before we're going into Tisha B'Av, and that we would sit on the floor and eat bread, hard-boiled egg, dipped in ashes. That is the meal. This year, since it's Shabbos, we don't do that. But what we have to do this year on Shabbos is... made this calendar anyhow. Oh, good, I did it right. Okay, yes. So on that Shabbos of Erev Tisha B'Av, we're going to Davin Mincha at 135. 
we can't have our usual mincha sudash lishit here in the shul. Why can't we ha do that? Why can't we do that? Um, because where you have the meal. Because <laughs> we have shalashudas, sudash lishit, we have it after sunset. And we have to oh. stop eating already before sunset. Oh, okay. God, thank you. So we're going to have mincha earlier. And then the fast is going to begin at 746. Okay. Shabbat ends at 827. And we're going to come back to Shul. Then we can already drive at that point. We'll come back to Shul at 845 for Mariv. And then we go straight into Eicha, straight into the reading of Eicha and some added davening. And because of COVID, when we were outside, we would do it outside there with flashlights. And I think we're going to keep to, keep doing that. It's, 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 it helps to evoke the right feeling. We're sitting outside there with flashlight here. August 6th. August 6th, yes. Yes. Um, Rabbi, I have a question. I, yes. I'm not sure if I missed this um, about Ave Lut. Um, do we have to cover the mirrors? Because no. that's the that's no. just a practice Correct. for an actual Avo? Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah, we don't oh, do that. And this is just a like, um, curiosity. Is the word Avel, like, is the shorish of that related to Hevel? No. It's oh, okay. Hevel's with a hey, hey okay. vet lamid. This is a aleph vet lamid, okay. right? Which 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 is the same word as aval, aval, but, right? But, like okay, yeah. Which right. which is interesting. Like an exception. Because right? when a person, I'm sorry. Like an exception. Y uh, like, yes. But yes, right, and and, and perhaps. You know, during that avail, the person's always asking questions, you know, but couldn't it have been somewhat different as we're coming to terms with with the loss that we have we have experienced? Couldn't there have been an exception? Yeah. Tisha is nine. The month of Av. Yeah. Okay. Now, it's fascinating to when you think about it. What does Av mean, Father? And that really, really gives us a glimpse that we view these tragic events, recognizing that they're coming from our loving Father. Right? And it's not punishment, it is discipline, it is. It is what we what we needed to go through. Yeah. Bread, eggs, and hard-boiled eggs. Dipped in acid. Now, what does that mean? Is that like real ashes? Like of yeah. Oh. Okay. Eat a whole box of it. Eat a whole box of it. Yeah, it's, it's the real deal. Yeah. Yeah. On that note, I heard a very interesting thing, right? The Shabbos after that is called Shabbos Nachamu, the Shabbos of comfort, consolation. And even on even on midday of Tisha B'Av itself, we already no longer sit on the stools, but we could sit on a regular chair. But the actual burning took place on the ninth and tenth day, and so so why are we diminishing our mourning in the middle of Tisha B'Av when the burning is still going on? And what is the consolation that we have the next Shabbos? Right, you know, the temple is uh, well, hopefully it will be rebuilt by then, but you know that last year wasn't rebuilt in between Tisha B'Av and the Shabbos after. 
But we had the Shabbos Nachamu, the Shabbos of Consolation. So I heard a very interesting explanation, I think in the name of Rav Salavechik. There's a teaching that had God not directed the heavenly penalty onto the Eitzin and Avanim, onto the wood and stones of Jerusalem, then it would have been directed against us. So our Nechama is, we're still here. That it was directed. So it's actually the burning of the Beit HaMittash is what starts to give us that Nechama that we will survive that the nation of Israel will continue. So that's the Nechama that we feel, not even as the temple is burning, but because the temple was burning, as opposed to the wrath of these soldiers, which was heavenly wrath that was being directed through the soldiers, that it was directed onto the temple and not onto us. Okay. The last of the fast days is Tzom Gedalia, and that is the day after Tish Abba'av, and that was the day that Gedalia was killed. And uh, as Esther had said, at first glance, that doesn't seem to be, that doesn't necessarily seem to be Beit HaMikdash Jerusalem related, but it is, because Gedalia was the appointed leader by the Romans to be in charge of the Jewish remnant that was still there. And when he was killed by another Jew, so then the people were very frightened of the repercussions that will come after that they killed the Roman appointed leader so at that point, even more of the Jews fled from Jerusalem. Even those that remain of those that remained, more and more left Jerusalem. So that was a a post a post destruction of the temple, further step of the exile that took place. Yishmael ben Netanyahu was the fellow's name. Who was a Jew, and and, and we, we we learn out from Gedalia that um, when it comes to lashon hara, when someone says something bad about someone else, you're not allowed to believe it as truth, but you're allowed to be suspicious and take precautions. If someone tells me that this guy that I'm about to go into business with has swindled his previous partners. I can't accept it as absolute truth, but I should investigate and find out. Because for me, finding out, it is what's called for a to'elas. It's for a positive purpose, and I need to find out. If someone, you know, if someone has been proposed for a potential match, right, a matrimonial match, one needs to find out about this other person. And if one hears some negative things, one cannot accept it as absolute truth, but needs to be careful and needs to, to take it into account. Gedalia was told that Yishmael ben Netanyahu is coming to kill him. He didn't accept the Lashon Hara. And when, it, when Yishmael came, he gave him a hug. Yishmael gave him a knife into his back. And that was the end. So he could not, he was, he was, he would have been wrong to accept it as absolute truth and have someone kill Yishmael on the way, on, on his way over. That would have been wrong. But what he should have done was be suspicious. Wave, wave, hi, welcome. Have some other men around. Have him searched before he comes into your inner chambers. Okay? So those that is the, the cycle of the fast days that we have. 
And like we said, the the nine the, the three weeks is starting this Sunday in terms of haircuts. But it is there there is not it is no application to cutting nails, even though by an avel there is an aspect of not cutting nails. That's not the case over here. One can cut one's nails in a regular normal fashion, but haircuts and live music and entertainment that we start to tamper down. Just one last point. In Avel, a mourner starts off with a high intensity level of mourning and then starts to taper down. There's the seven days, then there's the three, the 30 days, then there's the year when it's for a parent. It's tapering down. Here we're ramping up. Why is that? So by an Avel, when we when a person loses one of those closest to us, we feel the loss profoundly. What we need to do is slowly, gradually get ourselves back onto our feet and re-enter the world. And that's what those different stages do. They they give us the support we need and slowly push us back into the world. It'll be an ever-changed world, but we need to continue on in that world. Whereas over here, when we're talking about a mourning for something that took place almost 2,000 years, well, more than 2,000, uh, almost 2,000 years ago, See, here it's a matter of us starting to feel it, right? So therefore we build up in our intensity that we feel this loss that we, that we endure. And to recognize the, the enormity of the loss with the destruction of the time. Okay, my friends, we will call it over here, okay? Good seeing everybody in person. Thank you. Seeing everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Bye, little. Good night, everybody. Night. Yes. Let me see. Okay. I want to talk to you. Okay. Fast. Right. An easy fast. We don't want it to be meaningless. And it's too easy. It's too meaningless. So a meaningful fast is. I don't know how you say it in English. I say I say in English. I wish you a meaningful fast. You could do that. You could wake up on this Sunday before 4:25, right, and have something to eat, as long as you were planning to do that. Yeah. Uh, for me, I tell you personally, for me, it's not worth it. At 425, yeah, yeah. I'd rather, I'd rather just sleep till 8 and go to shore. Yeah, but to each their own.